coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm your host on Teaching with Board Games. Here today to talk to you about Unmatched by Restoration Games. So before I get to the report card on Unmatched, I want to talk about the history of the game. Now remember that Restoration Games is a company that focuses on taking games which were have been around for quite a number of years and ha are focusing on re-implementing some of these mechanics and the things within the game to make it more in, in keeping with the way board games are today. Uh, modern board games have a lot more to do with strategy than just being straight luck based. So they've done games like Stop Thief, Dark Tower, Fireball Island, and now Unmatched. Unmatched was originally a game called Star Wars Epic Duels, where you could take you know, Yoda and a couple clone troopers versus Emperor Palpatine and some guards, or Luke and Leia versus um, uh, Greedo and somebody else I can't remember it was just but it was it was a very simple game and it was a very bad game to be honest I was really excited I actually got a copy of it once and I was just so disappointed when I played it because there was really nothing to it but Restoration Games has taken that idea of taking these people these characters which you never met before on the battlefield in and now putting them together in a way that we can see well what if that what if question what if so in this particular the one this is called volume one you have king arthur alice in wonderland sinbad and medusa so you have these four characters who are going to do this what if battle what if king arthur battled medusa who would win well this is the kind of thing you can play out in this game and as i say it's volume one so there are other sets available where you can get like the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park and Bruce Lee, Robin Hood, Bigfoot, uh, all kinds of different characters, which just makes the game that much more fun as you start to expand into more possibilities of battle scenarios. But now let me take you to the report card. So look at the report card for this game. I'm going to give the number of players a B minus. I give it the B minus because it's really kind of at its heart, a two player game, but it does have the option to play up to four players. Now, sometimes they have those games, which is, you know, at its heart, a two player game. And they say, well, you can play four players by just splitting things, but it doesn't exactly work like that with this game. I mean, the, the, the four player game is actually four players playing four characters. It's not that you're just taking the one character and splitting the forces. So it does kind of work well, but really at its heart, it's the two player game. So even though it goes to four, that's why I'm giving it the B minus. So in looking at the learning for this game, I'm going to give it a C. There's reading involved, very minor math involved, but nothing really sort of major. But I'm going to be talking some more after this review about where I think this game really fits in well and why I'm including it in this channel. For fun, I'm gonna give the game an A. I mean, this game is incredible. They did such a good job with taking that game, which had was such a great idea and re-implementing it, re-scanning it. So now it's not just Star Wars. Now it's, you know, all kinds of different myths and legends and whatever else. And they it, it, it did such a good job with making it a really excellent game. So hats off to you, Restoration. You've done it again. So for time, I'm going to give the game a B plus. The game has is very easy to set up and therefore very easy to clean up and very quick games, particularly if you're playing the two players. The game should be over quite quickly, so it gets the B plus for me. So for cost, I'm going to give the game a B. Uh, this game runs about $40 and uh, I think that's a good price for a game like this. Very good quality game. This game has a lot of replayability. It's one of those things that the enjoyment is constantly there. And I think this is the kind of game you will be enjoying and enjoy playing more than once. Uh, it does have those expansions, and the expansions can run anywhere from around 16 to $50, depending on which sets you're getting, which have more and more characters that you can add to the game. But that to me is just, again, I, I like that kind of thing. I like the being having those options to expand, and they're not necessary at all. You can get the ones only that you want and disregard the ones that you don't want. So, so overall, I think it's a, it's a really good deal and one worth buying. I highly recommend it. All right, I'll take it to the table and I'll show you how this game is played. So this is the board setup for Unmatched, and you have, uh, actually it's a double-sided board, so you have two different board sides in the base game that you choose to play on. And as you get different sets, as I said, some sets are more expensive, because if the set comes with a board, then obviously it's going to cost more. Um, there's the one with the Bruce Lee 
expansion, so you can get Bruce Lee, but that only has the character, it doesn't have a board, so that's why that one I know is only like about $16. So when you're setting up the board, you're looking for the numbers ones and two. There's a little n n number one here and a diamond and a number two over here. These are gonna be the starting spots for the two players. It says that the, the starting player should be the younger player. So, so let's say the younger player chose to play King Arthur. So they're gonna take the King Arthur miniature, and the game comes with these nice miniatures with the color coated, uh, the color rings on the bottom. So you have uh, Medusa in green and Arthur in red. So we'll put King Arthur in there and Medusa goes there. They must start in those locations. That is mandatory for the beginning. What the players then have the option to choose is where they're going to put their lieutenants. So King Arthur comes with Merlin and Medusa has three harpies. Now I'm looking at the board you see that there's the circles, and that's where you know only one character can ever go in one circle, whether it's a, a hero or a lieutenant. You also see that there's lines joining some of the circles, and this means that there's adjacency. Adjacency means that you can see into that area and attack anybody in that area, no matter what. Um, Arthur, being a melee fighter, because it says here that he has melee, so he can only attack like with hand to hand with his sword. So he needs to be adjacent, no matter what, to fight. Whereas Medusa you see is ranged so Medusa can shoot things from range Medusa can see anything currently she's in this sort of purple zone here so she can see anything that's in the, these purple spaces anything that has a purple she can see she's in the same zone however if she was say here in this green zone she could still see Arthur even though he's in a different colored zone because he is still adjacent so that's how the attacking is going to work for you know for lines of sight and, and such so now with Arthur having placed there, he has to choose a place where he's going to put Merlin. The restriction on this is that Merlin has to be placed somewhere in the same zone as him. So maybe Merlin will go over there. Now Medusa can put her harpies anywhere in her zone. I mean, so she could go like this, be very bold, but that would be maybe sacrificing the harpies early. So um, maybe something like that. Now that both players have done, gone, what they're going to do is they're going to draw a starting hand of five cards. So every um, character has their own deck of cards, which is going to make a more thematic experience for how that character plays and what kinds of things that they can do. Now it should be noted, I'll show you the different types of cards. So you have some cards that have a burst, well, let's just show you the burst first. There's a burst symbol, that means it's only for attacking. And then there's ones with a blue shield and those are only for defending. Uh, but the purple ones have the burst and the shield, so those, can, those are versatile. They can attack or defend. And the number underneath shows the value. So you compare the value. So a six versus a three means the attack was six stronger than the defensive three. And I'll explain a little bit more about that when, when I talk about combat. This, these are called scheme cards, and that's all you have. So you have attack, defense, and scheme cards. So Arthur will take five, one, two, three, four, five. Medusa takes five, one, two, three, four, five. And you notice too that every deck is going to have their own character card giving you all the relevant information you need for the character, including starting wounds, which you track on these handy dandy trackers here. So Medusa should be starting with 16 wounds. Arthur starts with 18. And it tells you on the back too, a quick synopsis of what you can do in your turn. So on a player's turn, what they must do is they must take two actions, and they must take two actions. You cannot pass and say, well, I only want to take one, or I'm going to take zero actions. You have to take two. Now, in the two actions, you, your choices are as follows. You can maneuver. When maneuver, you must draw a card. That is mandatory. So say Arthur's going to choose maneuver for the first action, so he's going to uh, do that. Now, in, so the card drawing is mandatory. And now Arthur is going to be able to uh, move one of the fighters, and this is optional. But maybe he, what he wants to do with Merlin being ranged, maybe he wants to get Merlin into this zone here so he can make an attack on Medusa. So now for the, the next things you can do, so you have maneuvering is one action you can do. The second action you can do is scheming, which is those lightning bolt cards I showed you in the deck. The third action you can possibly do is to play an attack. So now, maybe now that Merlin's moved up into that space, Merlin's going to make an attack. So in looking at these things, so Arthur's looking at all the cards. So this one says King Arthur, so only Arthur can play this one. 
only anybody can play this one, only arts are on this one. But some cards may also say they're specifically only for Merlin. So you have to be aware of those cards. So we're going to play this card. It's a nice strong attack. And then, uh, well, looks like I need to shuffle better, but this was uh, Medusa's hand. So uh, any, any harpy harpies, so, well, they're all threes and they're all the same, so we're just going to put that down. Anyway, so that, that's what happens. So both players would put down a card face down. Once they pick, both picks a card, they reveal. So this card then, so we see the three attack with a three defense means that no damage was dealt. If the damage was less, so if the damage was greater, so the, if they put a, a stronger attack, then the difference would be how many points of life you reduce from the character. In the case of the Harpies, they would just be killed by any successful attack. So now this one says, um, we're looking here, so there's some after combat abilities. So after a combat, move King Arthur up to five spaces. So he go, but now he cannot move through enemy tokens. So the, the, the Harpies are useful for hedging in, something like that. So maybe one, two, three, four. So maybe he'll move up to there to get out of Medusa's line of sight. Well, not that he was in his, her line of sight, but just to move up so he can maybe put some attacks onto her. So his attack is done. Now Medusa says, after combat, it's a snipe card, after combat, draw one card. So then she would draw one card, and of course she gets one of those cards. Like I said, I need to shuffle better, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So players alternate back and forth, taking turns. Every turn, you're taking one of those three actions. You are maneuvering, you are scheming, or you're uh, attacking. Uh, and you're going through, through back and forth. If the lieutenants die, then that's too bad, that's, but it's not game over. Game is over when one player kills the other player. When one player has been eliminated, the other player declares the victory. In the case of a team game, you can play three or even four players, then you'd have to make sure that everybody on the team is killed, and then you can declare the victory. And that is a quick synopsis of how you play Unmatched. So as I was saying before, one thing I want to talk about with this game is how I see it fitting in really well with this whole idea of board games and education. What I love about this game, and this sort of inspired me that my next video I'm going to be doing, little spoiler alert here, is I'm going to be talking about games which inspire reading. So this kind of game, while the game itself may not have a lot of educational content in it, what it could be doing is it could be a vehicle to be inspiring young people or yourself to read more about it. Read some Legends of King Arthur, you know, talk about the mythology in, of Medusa, who was Medusa and uh, why did she become who she is. There's all these stories here that you could be reading about and you could be encouraging your kids to read about as well, your students, your children, yourself, whoever it is that you want to be reading. There's a lot here that could be done with that. And as I say, you know, there's other things to read about too. So there's uh, the Robin Hood, there's Bigfoot, there's the, the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park. I mean, Jurassic Park was a book first. However you choose to do it, the idea here is that these things are all based on literature. And so you can be using that as a vehicle to inspire reading of literature. And that's what I'm going to talk about my episode next week. But let me take you to my final thoughts. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Unmatched. And uh, if you have any questions for me about this game, or if you have any other ideas for games you might like to see on the channel, please leave me a message in the comment section below. If you have any other topics you'd like me to talk about with regards to gamification or game-based learning, that is my whole mandate here on the channel. If you're new to the channel, I'm doing weekly videos about gamification, game-based learning, games and education, how board games can be used to help to promote education. So if that sounds like something that you'd like, please hit like and subscribe down below. Remember to hit the little bell icon so that you're notified when I put out new videos, which I'm doing on a weekly basis. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Until next time, I'm Craig Thompson Wood, your host on Teaching with Board Games, saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school with me? We could have done it all.